Hello again fellow Beach Bum Traders. Welcome to part one of our weekly trading game plan for the week of March 7th through March 11th of 2022. The theme for this week is going to be be greedy when others are fearful. I'm sure most of you have probably heard that quote by Warren Buffett before. That goes be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. Well in this weekly trading game plan we know there's a lot of fear out there and we want to share with you some strategies of how you can profit uh, uh, trade successfully and be greedy when others are fearful. So please stick around till the end of the video and again we'll share some of the strategies that we plan to employ this week and going forward. Uh, to profit, successfully trade, and be greedy when others are fearful. So let's get started. Okay, first let's start on the Finviz homepage. Looks how we ended up on the markets uh, on Friday, March 4th. You can find our affiliate link to Finviz in the description box below or also in the link section under trading tools on our homepage beachbumtrading.com, bum without the U, uh, along with other trading tools. So again, let's uh, look at the Finviz homepage. We can see the markets all uh, ended in decline, the NASDAQ taking the biggest hit. We can see the heat map is uh, mostly red with some consumer uh, defensives positive, some healthcare positive. We'll look at the groups uh, in a minute. Uh, we can see more decliners, more new lows, more below their 50 SMA, uh, more below their 200 SMA. So again, a lot of, a lot of fear, a lot of negativity. Um, uh, towards the end of the week, uh, I, everyone's probably aware of that. If we look at the news very quickly, uh, we can see uh, some specific news. Big money unloads stock as day traders buy. A commodity spike, we'll, we'll see the commodities in the future uh, in a minute uh, due to the Ukraine war. We'll talk in detail about some strategies in those regards. Uh, the Dow declines, Ukraine concerns mount, so again, a lot, a lot of fear, and, and uh, we'll see the reactions to those fear uh, as we look at the futures and, and the market. So, and then oil's going crazy, it spiked, uh, there's talk about, you know, 130, 200, I've heard, so it, it's just crazy, and, and again, we'll talk about our strategy going forward with regards to these commodities, uh, specifically oil, uh, natural gas, etc. Gold ran up, again, uh, risk off, store value, fear, etc., so uh, it's driving gold up as well. And then we saw again this uh, risk off, this fear trade drives the uh, yields, the bond yields down, prices up. And again, we'll talk about our strategy and, and the uh, reaction to that in a minute. So I hope that helps as starters and, and now we'll uh, look at some additional data. Quick pause and uh, introduction of my uh, little boy cat that I'm sure you'll hear in the background throughout this video as he's uh, very, very boisterous uh, today as he wants to uh, be famous on the internet and in YouTube. He, he's the next uh, YouTube star, so I hope you'll bear with me as, uh, as he appears in, in several of the videos, and I don't know if you've seen this meme floating around, but... Okay, now if we look at the groups tab on PinBiz, the sector analysis, uh, we can see despite all the fear, even on Friday, we've got a couple of uh, sectors outperforming energy and utilities, and for the whole week, energy, utilities, and basic materials uh, outperform. So even despite all the fear, there are opportunities to make money in this market, even if it's a declining bear market, there's opportunities to make money in these outperforming sectors. We can see the worst performing sectors are communication services, technology, finance, and cyclical. And again, for the whole week, uh, pretty much the same. 
a month again same uh, themes energy basic materials utility so remember those themes and uh, stocks in those themes are, are more apt to outperform so again there are opportunities despite all the fear there's opportunities to make money in this market there's opportunities to make money in any market and I want uh, to continue to pass along that message and, and hopefully you will share, share that and uh, get over the fear be greedy when others are fearful and here's here's the opportunities again for three months you know energy basic materials utility so uh, we have a recurring theme that we can go with uh, and strategize uh, opportunities to make money so uh, let's continue okay now I'm on the futures tab of Finviz and I've really been focusing on this a lot. We'll continue to do so as this is a great way to see the the themes, the movements and the themes uh, in these various areas, even intraday. Uh, so I don't know if I've shown you this before, uh, but just quickly to show you is you can also zoom in on this chart. So you can zoom in to a five minute chart. If, uh, if we were in trading hours and you wanted to see the shorter time frame movements, you can zoom into a five minute chart or an hourly chart, or you can zoom out to a weekly chart. So again, if we do that, we can kind of see, okay, where are the indices uh, relative to their more longer term performance? So uh, we see this downtrend, uh, this bearish market, this declining market again. Uh, we can zoom out and we can see, you know, the longer term trend when you can zo zoom out to a month and we can see going way back. If we do that, we look at oil uh, just as a reference. We can see how o how high oil is. It's the highest it's been uh, since before 2017. So again, I just wanted to quickly show you, you know, how useful this is on the futures tab on Finviz. You can zoom in, zoom out. Uh, it does update real time. It's a little, there's a slight delay, uh, but it does update during the day. So again, this is something I'm using a lot uh, currently and will continue to do so going forward. So as we just saw, all the markets are in decline. They're in a declining market, a bearish market. We've been saying this for weeks. So uh, we've shared strategies of how to flip your mindset, flip the chart, make money in a declining bear market um, uh, over the past week. So we'd encourage you, if you're new to our Beach Bump Trading channel, please go back to uh, the game plans from previous weeks. You'll see the bears uh, in there. We've got strategies of how to play this market in general. So I'm not going to reiterate those uh, this week. But again, we can see all the declining markets. So uh, that's that's the way to play those. Um, I really want to get more information about how to play some of the global markets and uh, particularly with ETFs because uh, a lot of our tradings and retirement accounts. I'm sure several of other people, other beach pump traders are also trading in retirement accounts. So you'll see we tend to focus on uh, ETFs that we can trade in retirement accounts in addition to uh, individual stocks, long shorts, etc. Uh, we can also see that the VIX, and someone uh, else pointed out in one of the discords as well, is this is very strange behavior for the VIX to be uh, have a trend. Is generally the VIX, you can see it spikes, then it reverts to its mean, downtrends, uh, spikes again, etc. So this is a strange behavior for it to trend this way. Uh, we do expect it, and we'll talk about... Uh, in part two, uh, our specific plays in this area, our specific trades in this area, and how we're going to trade it going forward. But uh, again, this behavior is unusual for the VIX, so we expect it to uh, revert to its its traditional behavior of uh, reverting to the mean, retracing to the mean. So. I uh, just wanted to point that out quickly. Uh, you know, all the talk on oil, we'll talk about our strategy for playing oil. We just saw in the monthly chart how overextended it is for the long term. And uh, a lot of the reasons for that, I'm sure you're aware, is that Russia, I've heard numbers as high as almost 40% that Russia is supplying almost 40% of, of the U.S. oil, which is bizarre. Uh, but again, there's a, a number of factors that are causing that and there are a number of remedies for that and and we'll talk about our strategy for how, to, how we're playing that as well. Uh, gasoline, heating oil, they're all similar. 
Natural gas has not behaved quite the same. It, it is going up, but it, it's not spiking the way oil is. It's still kind of in the middle of its range. So uh, we don't have a strong play in natural gas right now. Um, they shut off the Nord Stream pipeline. Uh, again, there, there's just not as strong of a, a trend in natural gas right now. So we don't really have a play in that area. Uh, gold is hitting, again, long-term highs. Um, we're not shorting gold yet. Uh, we've, we're looking at it. We're currently long a number of miners. We're long GLDI, etc. Uh, but uh, this is a very extended. But the fear continues. All the all the tailwinds driving gold up continue. So again, we're not really preparing to short gold yet. But um, Silver is getting a nice run up. I think it's still got room to run. Again, we're long silver, number of miners, uh, SLVO, uh, etc. So uh, uh, these are are uh, giving us profits now. Um, copper we'll talk about in a minute. A uh, number of these others. I'm looking for ETFs to be able to short some of these overextended plays. When I see charts like this that are overextended, my to the upside, my first inclination is how do I short that? How do I short that? Uh, again, this is what's great about these future charts is you can very quickly spin through, uh, initially look at them. Okay, here's another example I want to share with you is that looks like a long, right? It looks like it's overextended to the downside. Now, what I can do is I can look at a longer term view of this chart. So I just, I right clicked, I opened this chart. Uh, to zoom in on just live cattle uh, over a longer term. And although in that smaller chart it looked like, oh, that was a long opportunity, when I do this, I say, oh, well, it's it's really not. It's coming down to a, a gap. It's probably going to continue down on the gap fill. So even though, again, my initial view was, hey, I should long that, I want to check this first to make sure that we're not seeing something like that. And really, in a longer term, it's, it's not at a bottom. It's not really even at a great support level. It's probably going to break down a gap fill. So again, just encouraging you to, uh, you know, look in more detail. Don't don't just jump on it and say, oh, I, I need to long that right now. Let's zoom out and let's see what's really going on. Again, corn, I'm looking for a short. Uh, don't know about that. What wheat, I, I've been looking. I was, that, that is so overextended. Uh, I would love to be able to short wheat right now. I, it may continue up, but charts like that, that's, to me, that's like a, uh, such a great short opportunity. Even if it continues up, it's, it's not hard to produce wheat. So um, eventually it's going to come back down. So again, opportunity. If you know of an opportunity to short wheat, particularly an ETF, uh, I think long term, that's, that's a given money maker. So. I hope that helps. Uh, sugar's getting up there. Haven't really looked at it yet because it's not really there yet, but it's still overextended. Uh, and then the the bonds. I mean, that behavior is just risk off. It's just the algo mutual fund algo is flipping off. They say sell stocks, buy bonds, so the prices go up. Uh, it makes no sense. Uh, just just wait till the Fed starts their quantitative tightening. Uh, they start selling off all their bonds, the fear resides, and these prices are going to drop, the yields are going to go back up, and we'll talk about how we're playing that uh, in the near future. Also, the U.S. dollar, I mean, there's some opportunities uh, coming up in the Forex markets, too, so, I mean, we may have to start looking at those. So, there are just so many opportunities, uh, again, to be greedy when others are fearful, and uh, these are great ways to find them. I hope this all helps you. Uh, we'll look at some more in a minute. Okay, I'm now going to quickly flip over to the markets screen in the online browser version of Weeble. Uh, again, you can get free stock via our affiliate link in the description box below to Weeble and also in the trading platforms link section on our homepage, beachbumptrading.com. And again, you can get two or more free stocks. They run additional promotions from time to time. So check that out if you're not already using Webull. Uh, it's one of our favorite trading platforms again. 
So again, if I go to the markets tab, we can see how the markets ended up on Friday. Uh, more decliners and advancers. We can see from the net inflow that or the NASDAQ continues uh, to have outflows. Uh, this has gone on for days. NASDAQ is getting hit the hardest. We can see the other markets had outflows, but it's not as dramatic. So um, then I just want to very quickly look at the... Um, Best performing industries and ETFs just very quickly will we'll again be able to very quickly get a theme for what's moving. We see coal. Uh, I know uh, Money Mitch, Story Investors has been pointing out BTU. BTU's had a good run. Um, so coal's doing well. Again, materials doing well. Energy doing well. This is interesting. Well, this is utility. So we saw that as well. Um, others, uh, I'm surprised, aerospace and defense, some of the aerospace defense companies were running up. Uh, I'm not going to talk about that in too much detail. I'm not terribly interested in that, really. Um, we did make some good money with KTOS, Kratos, and uh, we got stopped out, but we made a very nice profit in that area. So, um, Again, we see utilities, natural gas is positive. Uh, so that gives us, again, a good view for those themes very quickly. We go back. And again, we have another video on how to use this market screen, so I, I'm not going to explain it in this uh, video a whole lot. Uh, please see that other video for how to use the market screen. Uh, so again, we look at the markets. Uh, we can see down, everybody, you know, the down bets, up on volatility. Uh, down on the indexes, down on the Russell. Um, Industry-wise, again, mostly red, communications, industrials, all red, utilities positive, energy positive, uh, even materials here on Friday was a little negative, consumer cyclical negative, defensive, consumer defensive a little positive, so real estate positive, REITs, again, uh, flight to safety, you're going to see dividend stocks, REITs, etc. And, you know, we've been positioning in those areas for, for several weeks now. And again, those are, are giving our portfolio, you know, an uplift in, in this environment. So uh, it's an area, if you're not already in that area, you might want to think about it and look into it. Uh, commodities, again, very positive, big focus here. Any commodities are an inflation hedge in general, um, and they're running up because of all the other fear uh, cases and the other global uh, events going on. And then treasuries, uh, this is interesting, extended duration, long term, 20 year, etc. So again, this is all the flight to safety, risk off, sell, sell stocks, buy bonds, and they're buying long term bonds. Um, and again, we'll talk about a strategy going forward f uh, in that area in a minute. So I hope that all helps. Okay, even though the war in Ukraine, uh, the Russian war in Ukraine is dominating uh, everyone's focus right now, uh, we'll do a very quick review of the economic data. Uh, we'll look at the economic calendar from last week, some, some main points uh, uh, from last week on investing.com. Uh, you can find this uh, also. There's a link on the trading tools on our homepage, peachbumptrading.com, bum without the U. Uh, so you can get to investing.com, flip over to uh, the news, economic calendar, and we can see for this week. Um, and you could, I, I like this again if you're kind of new to our channel. I like this calendar because you can very quickly see the highlights, red, greens, etc. So you can scroll down very quickly and see these. Uh, I find that very helpful. So just to point out some of the notable points is on Wednesday uh, we had the OPEC meeting. And uh, it lasted, I guess, about 10 minutes and they decided they're not going to change their previous production plans. So they're still increasing production by, I think it's uh, 400,000 or something. Uh, barrels per month so they're increasing production month to month but they're not accelerating that plan at all they didn't change it so uh, that you know it didn't staunch the oil price it continued to spike up uh, because of the uh, decline in the supply from Russia um, again just my opinion uh, all of this is not financial advice it's just for educational 
and entertainment purposes, but in my opinion, uh, this behavior in oil is totally irrational, um, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes, but, it, but again, uh, you know, we went through a time when oil went negative, and that was totally irrational too, but it, th these things happen. Um, and then they revert, they cycle through. So uh, I expect the same type of behavior again over time. Uh, the, uh, whenever you see these irrational, uh, they, they are opportunities. Again, be greedy when others are fearful is the message for this week and uh, in the near term. So then we heard uh, employment numbers were better than forecasts. That was uh, positive. Uh, crude oil was down, the inventories were down more, and again, that will drive price up, is uh, depleting inventories. And then on Thursday, we saw jobless claims data was um, continuing claims were better than expected. Or actually, yeah, continuing, okay, there's forecast, it was a little worse than expected, uh, initial was a little better than expected so that was it was mixed and then on friday uh, we saw stocks sink and commodities melt up as the war uh, rattles the markets so again this commodities trend uh, commodities up is a, is a major trend and then this is news from pinviz that i copied out and then the the um, shelling of the nuclear power plant we'll, we'll talk about uh, what impact that had in a minute and then we got jobs data u.s economy added greater than forecast uh, 678,000 jobs in february uh, so we'll see that 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 was positive uh, we got a little bit of inflation data nothing uh, major um, so again then we saw the the jobs data on friday was was generally uh positive so Again, there there wasn't a lot of, normally that would be a major focus, and it just wasn't because of the Russian war in Ukraine. Now, if we flip over to the economic calendar for next week, um, and again, it's not going to be the focus. Normally, a lot of these things would be, everyone in the markets would be focused on the economic calendar. Uh, right now, they're all focused on, on the uh, Russian war in Ukraine and, and the fear that that's generating. But just a couple things to point out major events is we've got CPI data, inflation data on Thursday, we've got customer sentiment data on Friday. So if the fear from the war um, abates any, uh, you may see more focus um, on these areas uh, going forward. So I uh, still have earnings, you know, uh, it's probably abating some. Um, we can look very quickly at the earnings calendar and see how heavy the calendar is for next week. So if I go next week, uh, we can see, you know, we still got a, a number of earnings. It should be uh, wrapping up uh, mostly, but again, you can take a look, see if there's uh, anything uh, that might impact your portfolio or your potential buys. Is earnings uh, they do matter, but again, that's not the focus right now. The focus is all on the impact of the war. So this may have less of an impact other than the individual stock than it has in the past couple of weeks. So we hope that all helps. Now let's talk about uh, what are our strategies for this week and in picking our stocks to add to our watch list, our bullpen, our shopping list, etc. Okay, let's talk about uh, some of our strategies uh, for this week of uh, March 7th through the 11th and how we're going to pick our stocks for our watch list, our, our bullpen, etc. How we're going to play these going into the next week. Uh, firstly, uh, we're not touching or even looking at considering any Russian stocks, ETFs of Russian stocks, etc. In my humble opinion, that's just all too risky. The Russian stock market's been closed. There are some ETFs still trading, but they may they may be pulled. Uh, they're based on stocks in a market that's closed. Again, just we're not even going to look at that. So uh, anything in Russia, you know, we're just going to forget about it. Just like we did with China, we're just going to exclude them and not consider it. Um, 
any company so something to really think about is the companies that are impacted directly or indirectly by either sanctions on russia so uh any kind of additional finance etc ha that c had business in russia is getting hurt so it's important to know if a company is going to be impacted by sanctions uh, current or future sanctions or by loss of business in Russia so we saw uh, they're, they're cutting off communications and again I'm, I'm trying to avoid the pol political side too much and my views in those areas but uh, they're cutting off communications outside communications so they shut down Facebook um, so any any companies that are going to be hurt by uh, Russia cutting off connections, cutting off communications, cutting off trade. Uh, you want to be aware of that, what the impact on you, on your portfolio is going to be if Russia cuts off business with, with that company. The other side is companies voluntarily leaving Russia or cutting off business with Russia. For example, Kojin is one of the largest internet provider, backbone providers, and they're shutting down business from Russia. Uh, due to threats of cyber cyber uh, attacks um, so you know what other communication providers are going to uh, shut down uh, business with Russia then we had BP pulled out of their uh, I think it was like a joint venture or something with Russia Nike pulled out of uh, Russia so companies are going to lose some business Russia really isn't that big of a market so the loss is not as great as say China um, but again, it's thinking about the impact on your portfolio or something you're considering buying if that company pulls out of Russia and loses that, that business. So be aware of that um, when choosing stocks, uh, taking positions, etc. Um, now to kind of get off that, that topic, uh, because of this, and we had Powell had a... Uh, press conference uh, hearing in front of the Congress for a couple days this week and uh, uh, it didn't really jar the market like it often does because again the, the focus is on the Russia war in Ukraine uh, but a notable point is because of this and um, the employment numbers are looking good so uh, they're now in and he just came out and stated he would support a, a quarter point rate hike and not a half point rate hike so that has kind of reduced uh, the level of the first rate hike in March which is now expected to be 0.25 and then the number of rate hikes is still a matter of discussion people some people say four some people say six seven etc uh, some people say the terminal rate where they're going to end up is is maybe 2.5 other people think higher but Again, this the war and inflation, etc. They have to fight inflation, so they have to show they're fighting inflation. So they're gonna hike. It's just the rate and the frequency that is indeterminate at this point. Uh, we'll have a further discussion. I, I don't want to make this video too long, but uh, if we have more time, we'll talk about the quantitative tightening and um, the impacts of quantitative tightening versus uh, rate hikes. I really believe that the quantitative tightening is where the Fed's going to focus uh, their actions. Uh, and again, I'll go into that more detail in the future. So oil, um, an important thing to note uh, that may, maybe was not as apparent is they are already talking uh, about lifting sanctions on Iran uh, because they need more, more oil on the market. Um, and OPEC did not increase production. And there's no nothing else going on in the administration to increase domestic production uh, as far as I know right at this moment so um, w listen for that is that could trigger a decline in the oil price and it could be a quick uh, decline and then settle into a new uh, place so Another point discussion, I'll probably put this in the comments, in our Facebook group, in our Discord, etc. It's already posted in, in the ETFs channel of our Discord. Um, as you saw in the futures chart, um, I'm looking for additional ETFs uh, in these areas. I've searched the ETF database. Uh, we have a video on how to use the ETF database. So I've already looked for these in that database. I'm just wondering 
uh, if someone knows of something that I might have missed or that's not in that database uh, to be able to long or short any of these topics because we saw the opportunities in the futures chart they're overextended uh, irrational at this point or in the near future and we want to look for opportunities to be able to play those either long or short so you know you see Russia corn wheat etc coal and then we also saw that uh, copper and palladium are overextended. I do have ETFs that are long in those areas. I've got KOPX for copper, which is a miners, and I've got PALL, which is a um, just an ETF long on palladium. So I've got longs in those areas, and I'm looking for shorts. So anybody that knows any of those finds a, a way to do that uh, again particularly ETFs because uh, we can trade those short in the uh, retirement accounts which uh, we can't short individual stocks so anybody that knows that uh, your uh, replies would be most appreciated uh, and we'll share that with all our fellow beast bump traders uh, in our discord so uh, we hope this all helps uh, we hope you like this uh, we hope you'll choose to subscribe to our beast bump trading YouTube channel, etc. Please let us know any other thoughts you have on these strategies, etc. Uh, in the comments below, in our Facebook group, in our Discord, etc. And uh, come back for part two tomorrow and we'll talk about uh, how we're using these strategies, all this input data to select the stocks to put on our watch list for next week and add to our bullpen, etc. So again, hope this all helps and good luck and have a great day. Okay, just as a real quick bonus for any of you or all of you hopefully are uh, watching through the end of the video, just wanted to show you one of the ways we exclude categories of stocks in our database of stocks. And one of these days, uh, I'll probably make some more videos about how, how to build the database of stocks uh, that, that defines your universe of the things you're watching and, and how you can manage uh, that using uh, some kind of database so um, this is the database we use and I have a, a table where I can exclude whole categories of stocks you can see the categories we currently have excluded which is China Hong Kong and shipping I know these shipping stocks the day traders love them top ship dries etc I don't even know how many of those are still around but uh, high risk so I've been burned with those before, so I'm just going to stay away from them. And you can see I can just add Russia in there. And in each symbol in my database, I have a category. If the category says Russia, I just exclude it. And then in my short list, which defines all the stocks that we, we paste this into Thinkorswim, so we have a uh, watch list, a, a table in Thinkorswim, and we just paste this in there. And this defines uh, what comes up in our scanners, etc. Uh, so here's my universe. Everything I've ever put in the database is in the stock candidates. And then you can see I've got excluded by category. I can exclude individual stocks. I can put them on a do not trade list. Uh, you hear people say a DNT list. That's a do not trade. I, I can put individual symbols in that table and just say I, I don't like that symbol anymore. Don't even look at it. And then also if they are at risk of delisting. So I can uh, exclude those uh, from uh, if they have non-compliance issues if they're at risk of delisting again I can automatically exclude all of those and uh, for any consideration at this time so just wanted to show you that briefly as a bonus uh, I hope that helps again uh, we can talk about that in more future about how how do you set up uh, that kind of database to define your universe of stocks uh, so let me know what you think do you want to see more about uh, that kind of topic or uh, is that unnecessary so again i hope that all helps good luck have a great day the content of this video was produced by beach bum trading we hope you will choose to also join us in the beach bum trading community and subscribe to our youtube channel visit us at our home page at beachbumtrading.com the bum without the u Similarly on Twitter, Beach Bum Trading, Bum Without the U. On Facebook and in our Beach Bum Trading Facebook group. Please follow us on Pinterest. 
and on Instagram. All of the links to our social media sites will be included in the description box below, and we hope you will choose to subscribe to our Beach Bum Trading YouTube channel and follow us on social media. Thank you. We also cordially want to invite you to our new Beach Bum Trading Community Discord server where we can have discussions on all topics related to trading, success in trading, investing, etc. You can see uh, alerts when we make trades, changes to our watch list, etc. So again, please join us in the new Beach Bump Trading Community Discord server. You should be able to find a link in the description box below. You can also find a link in the social media category on our web page beachbumtrading.com without the bum without the u and also in the link section on the about page of our youtube channel etc so again we look forward to seeing you in the beach bum trading community discord server soon wave and say hello We hope that you like our weekly game plan for the trading week for this week. Thank you for watching the video to the end. If you found this helpful, we hope that you will choose to subscribe to our Beach Plum Trading YouTube channel. And please click the bell icon below to automatically be notified whenever we publish a new video. Please also share this with your fellow traders and friends via the share button included below. And let us know if you found our weekly game plans helpful in the comments uh, included below. And uh, let us know how we can improve. What would you like to see more, less of, etc. Thank you again for watching. Uh, good luck and have a great trading week. Bye. If you like this video, we hope you will choose to subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the box in the upper left hand corner. You can watch another video like this by clicking on the box in the lower right hand corner. And we have a whole playlist of videos like this that you can access via the box in the upper right hand corner. Our latest video is available in the box in the lower left hand corner. We hope you like this and have a great day.